Hey guys, what's up? It's like Superst here, and today I'll be reacting to episode 4 of Avatar The Last Airbender. In the previous episode, Aang and the gang visited the Southern Air Temple, and that's when Aang discovered that all of the air nomads have been extinguished because the Fire Nation killed them all. And now I believe they're traveling to the Northern Water Tribe. Let's see what's going to happen next. This is episode 4 of Avatar The Last Airbender. Hey guys, before we continue with the reaction, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you won't miss any new uploads. And with that, let's go back to the reaction. You know, even after 15 years, this opening is still really good. Okay, episode four. Oh wait, okay. We're gonna we're gonna visit the the Earth Kingdom first. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty cool. You know, how just with breathing they can control flames. That's true. <laughs> okay, that was a good setup for the. the that was a good setup for the joke. I'm pretty sure they just don't know where to go. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, I, I do like the jokes here. They 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 hit they hit when they hit they hit really well. Where they're going, he won't need any pants. <laughs> what? Is that an, an innuendo or something? He always looks tired, bruh. Flying bison. Ooh. Koi. Okay. Okay, this is this this does look fun. I mean it's kind of like a surfing maybe. Or water gliding. It kinda of looks like he's water gliding. Oh my gosh, what the heck? There was something bigger than the elephant koi. Okay. What is that? <laughs> okay, that was some very interesting animation right there. What is that? That seemed like a fish with biblical epic proportions. Oh my gosh. That's just from one thing to another. You 
she stayed out of the war so long, and we intend to keep it that way. This island is named for Kiyoshi? I know Kiyoshi. Ha! Ah, how could you possibly know that? Avatar Kiyoshi was born here 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. been dead for centuries. Wait, is this uh, the point when Aang will kind of have a, some kind of connection or communication with Kiyoshi? And that's him. Wow. <laughs> All right. Wow. Of course he is. <laughs> they went crazy for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Some jokes are good. Some... I, I don't know. They probably didn't age that well, or they're not as funny now. Now he's got a fan club. Okay. It's a bit too much.
Oh. It's Aikido, basically, right? And then the Unagi shows up. Of course. Okay, so what does this thing look like, really? It has spikes on its back. Oh my gosh, it's a big eel. Or the Loch Ness Monster. My gosh. It's one thing after another, isn't it?
Okay, so I think with this episode, I thought we were going to see Avatar Kiyoshi make her appear her first appearance because it's the island where she was born, and I was I, I specifically remember Aang actually talking to Kiyoshi before. I just don't know which season or which episode it was going to be, but apparently it's not this one. Instead, we get to see the people who are living in Kiyoshi Island. And there are two things here that I think are particularly noteworthy. The first is the fact that Aang got a lot of attention for being the Avatar and being praised, and it got to his head, and he started to brag about it to Katara, and it's kind of like the thing that happens when you get all famous and you start leaving your friends behind and not noticing them or not spending time with them anymore. On the one hand, obviously Aang was in the wrong. He was letting it kind of form a wedge between him and Katara and he was acting like a jerk, definitely. But at the same time, I think because it's been a hundred years since he was in the iceberg and he wasn't really able to live out his life normally, so I guess that there's part of him that desires acceptance or belongingness. Although he has that in Katara and Sokka, being able to get recognition from other people, strangers, that's a whole different thing. So he might have gotten overwhelmed. He, well, first of all, he probably got overjoyed, but then later it got over. he got overwhelmed and it got to his head and he acted all smug and that caused him to act stupidly and recklessly. Thankfully though, the, the one saving grace, I guess the one redeeming factor in this episode is that they made up very quickly. Both Aang and Katara reconciled, I guess, because these stories made for kids are trying to, to teach children that you shouldn't get let things like this, like fame or maybe even fortune, get to your head and desert your friends because of it. And then you have to quickly reconcile and make up with your friends when you realize that you made a mistake. So I guess that was the moral of that scene. Now, the second thing that we saw was Sokka being sexist and a misogynist. Now, I know a lot of people might be looking at this episode and they're probably going to cancel not just Sokka, but the show and the showrunners, the writers, because why would you write something like that into the show? But I can also see it from the context of the characters themselves. Sokka was probably the only male, the only guy in the Southern Water Tribe. Probably he was the only warrior left after Everybody else was taken away or died. So he holds this kind of pride and he has this mindset that only the, the, the men of his tribe can become warriors. And then he meets these warrior women, warrior ladies on Kiyoshi Island who are better than him. Of course he would have that, he would bring that kind of perspective or attitude because he was confined in his tribe for most of his life so he didn't know anything else apart from what he saw what he experienced and what he knew but being able to encounter a different culture in a different context he learns that in other places women can be trained and 
become warriors. And the redeeming factor for him there is that he acknowledged his mistake and he shifted his perspective. And he humbled himself enough, not just to apologize, but also to ask to be trained by the women who, whom he insulted. And I think if I'm not mistaken, later on, he was going to form some kind of romantic relationship with Suki. Although I'm not sure that that memory is a bit fuzzy to me. Anyway, that those were the two main points I think that I got from this episode. And then, yeah, the Unagi. It's like a Loch Ness monster-ish kind of creature. So that was mostly it for this episode. Yeah, it was fun. There were some jokes that were really funny still, even after all these years, but maybe that's just me. Uh, it's part of the type of humor that I like. You know, if it, as I said a while ago, if it hits, it really hits. And it, it hits well. So I had... I enjoyed this episode and I'm excited to see the next episode and I want to thank you guys for joining me in this episode and I hope to see you in the next one.